Living with clutter just induces stress. Whether you feel it or not, it is there. It's latent and it just sits and builds and builds and builds. On the opposite side of the spectrum, if you live in a home without clutter, you feel more relaxed, more at ease, and just an increased sense of wellness. I can't quite explain it, but it just happens. So if you're struggling to live with less, I want to give you 10 really easy things that you can try to start living with less clutter. There's a rule. It's an easy one. It's called one in, one out. What it means is every time you bring something into your house, you take something else out of your house. You buy a new white t-shirt, you get rid of an old white t-shirt or an old purple t-shirt. It doesn't matter as long as you're constantly cycling through things because anytime you let things start to build up, that's when you start to build clutter. In my experience, it is easiest to see what's at eye level first. We don't often look up or down, but we see what's right there, right in front of us. That's why when it comes to keeping clutter low at home, you want to pay attention to those horizontal surfaces that get frequented. I'm talking countertops, tables, desks. You can imagine where I'm going with this. What you want to do every day is make sure that you're spending a few minutes decluttering and clearing these spaces so that again, clutter's not building up. What this might look like is a few minutes before you wind down for the evening, just take a quick spin around the house and kind of put things back where they belong. For example, take any cups that you find around the house and bring those over to the dishwasher, put any papers where they might belong. It, again, like it's only just gonna take you a couple of minutes to do, but it's just keeping the clutter from building up on those horizontal surfaces. It's gonna help you feel so much cleaner and tidier and more relaxed at home. For those of us that still receive copious amounts of mail, I recommend coming up with a little mail station in your house. For me, it's my desk because the next time I sit down, I've got to open those envelopes, deal with the paperwork and get rid of the uh, evidence, if you will. So what I might do is take a photo of it and upload it into our digital filing cabinet, which I've got to tell you, I love not having extra paper hanging around the house. Or if it is something where I really will need the physical document, we have a filing cabinet to handle that. And anything else like buy this, donate to this, da 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 da, like I just end up tossing that in the shredder. Envelopes and other marketing material just ends up in the recycling bin. But if you're not paying attention to this very frequently, your mail is going to build up. Oh, and another little tip I will give you, I stop checking the mailbox every day because really like the only mail I'm getting is like mostly garbage these days. So why am I running to the mailbox? Now, if you're serious about decluttering, but you're feeling overwhelmed and you don't know where to start, I have created a free three-day decluttering challenge. It is simple and it is designed to help you start building that decluttering muscle. So go ahead, you can click on the link down below. Again, it is totally free to sign up and join me. I'll be right there with you in video form, helping you along the way. It's amazing how quickly your digital space can get as cluttered as quickly as your IRL space. And that's why it's important to keep on top of those digital spaces. What am I referring to? Your email inbox. If you're not at inbox zero, listen, I'm not at inbox zero, but I'm, my inbox number is pretty decent. Um, if you find that you have too many unopened emails, spend 10 minutes, just start going through them and chunking it down. Unsubscribe from any emails that you are receiving that you no longer need. Also, if you have old photos or files on your computer that you just don't need and everything is all over the place, think about creating a digital filing system. Create folders and then stick those files in the appropriate folders. That way, life is just a little bit easier for you. This does take a little bit of time, but I can promise the initial investment in time really does pay off for future you in terms of productivity. I've also experienced this with apps. You know, you go to a spa one time or a restaurant and they tell you you have to download their app. Fine, you download their app and then the next thing you know, you've got 27 extra apps that you don't need. So every now and then, you know, just go through your phone, press hard on those apps and delete them if you don't need them. Remember, if you do need it again, you can always download it. If inner child you is freaking out at me right now and doesn't want to declutter because you feel like it's going to take you hours, I've got a suggestion for you. Just put five minutes on the timer and start practicing a five minute pickup. 
I know it doesn't sound like a lot, but you would really impress yourself if you saw what you could do in just five minutes. In that time, you can probably pile together a bunch of things that were otherwise not in their right spaces and bring them to their right space. You might be able to get rid of some garbage. You might be able to collect all the dishes in the house and bring them to the kitchen. Really, you'd be surprised. And hey, you might even go to 10 minutes. Who knows? You know what helps you declutter? A donation box. And you don't need a fancy one. I'm talking the next time you get a delivery, just write donation box on the box after you've unpacked it, of course, and start putting things that you don't need in there. Then you can find a worthy place to drop that box off. And what I mean by this is don't take it to the side of the road donation box drop off point because sadly 90% of that stuff or so ends up in landfills. So find a worthy home for the stuff that you are getting rid of because just because it doesn't make sense for you doesn't mean that it can't make sense for anyone else. If it's still got useful life in it, you should make sure that it can continue to live its life and serve someone else. This really depends on personal taste. However, if you want a space that looks decluttered, you probably are someone who likes a more minimal approach to decor, but you might not know how to achieve that. And really what it comes down to is buying less stuff, but the stuff that you do end up buying, make sure that it's really beautiful, really meaningful, and really catches the eye so that you don't need tons of it. When there's too much decor in a home, the space just looks cluttered. Now, if you can artfully cluster your decor together, you probably have hired an interior designer, or you are an interior designer, but otherwise it might just be hard for you to know exactly how to put it together without it all looking like clutter. I was listening to a financial expert recently and she said that one of the biggest pitfalls she finds her clients falling into is sale shopping or buying things on impulse. And I would have to agree, not only is that a poor financial decision, but also it adds to a lot of clutter in your home because you think you need something, you buy it, you bring it home on a whim, and then there you go. And that's how clutter starts to build up. So the opposite of that is to have a shopping list, think about that item, and if it's something that you really want, give it 30 days. If in 30 days that fire is still burning, go ahead and buy it, you've earned it. But if you've kind of gotten over that initial urge, good for you. One space where it feels all too easy to overstuff and overclutter is your bedroom drawers, dressers, and closets. And that's why consider streamlining your wardrobe. And what this might look like is going through and picking out those super trendy items that you're just over or you're not wearing or you bought as an aspirational size and it's not really fitting, been there, done that. So what you can do is just get rid of those items, stick with the basics that look amazing on you and that you can wear regularly. You can add in nice, you know, exciting pieces here and there. And I'm not saying you have to dress like a boar, but what I am saying is have functional stuff in your closet that really makes sense for you and your lifestyle and your taste. Because if you're cluttering it up with a whole bunch of cool stuff that you're never gonna wear, that is just overwhelming, a waste of space and money for you. This one might feel and sound a little woo woo, but it is a good one. So please just stick with me. Take a minute to look around and appreciate the beauty and what you already have, okay? Because when we start to feel less than, and I need this, and I gotta get this, and oh, I've gotta have this latest thing, and I, I'm gonna click on this and buy it on Instagram because it looks cute in that person's house. That's when we start to build up clutter because we start to feel this sense of, I'm not good enough, I need this thing to make me happy. But the truth is, you probably have things at home already that are beautiful. It's kind of like kids with toys, you know, they always want the new thing, and you're like, no, you already have 300 toys, you're fine. It's the same with us, all right? So take a few minutes, look around, really appreciate what you have. And what you might notice is that it reduces that urge for you to want to run out and buy things. You might rediscover the beauty or the joy in something that you've had for a long time and it's sort of been buried behind other things. Like for example, I'm looking at some of the, the plant pots that we have here in the house and they're, they're all so unique and beautiful and we have a lot of plants. And even though when I go out, I see new planters and I'm like, oh my God, I would love to have that. It's like, no, I already have beautiful planters at home and I'm already taking care of like 300 plants, I'm good. 
What I can tell you is this, it's very easy to accumulate clutter. It takes quite a bit of effort to declutter, but once you go through that, you don't wanna have that clutter build up again, so it really does shift your mindset. And that's why I encourage you to test some of these out and see how it goes, because you'll start to notice that the act of decluttering actually feels really good. The challenge is knowing where to start. And that's why I created the free three-day decluttering challenge, because I want to give you very easy, simple things that you can start with so that you can start to build your decluttering muscle. So if you wanna join me on that, you can click down below and join. It is totally free and I promise you it will help. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.